Good evening, good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, the beautiful people of Alternative Healthcare Career Group. And yes, if you are watching live, please comment live. If you're watching on the replay, please comment replay because we've got a special guest for tonight. Got a special guest for tonight. Well, anyway, our guests are always special every night or every time we go live, right, ladies and gentlemen? But before we keep on going, I always do this in our calendar, in my calendar. Right? Today is Thursday. September the 17th, right? If you can see it, type in, you can see it. If you cannot, type in, I cannot. But I think I can see it, right? Go ahead and read it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to read it, right? There is a call on your life to do something great with the rest of your life. Keep on living, ladies and gentlemen. Keep on living. You see that, ladies and gentlemen? Whether you got fired whether you got laid off, whether you got COVID, right? Just keep on living, ladies and gentlemen, because there's a call on your life to do something great with the rest of your life. Your best days are still ahead of you, ladies and gentlemen. Your best days are still ahead of you. You may encounter some stumbling blocks along the way, all this stuff that we're going through, but all those stumbling blocks will be a stepping stone for your next success. Speaking of success, I have a special success and win for tonight, I just got a copy of the book of one of my students, Injury Prevention Tips for Novice. Is that how you say it? Novice? Weightlifter. Gosh. Danny Sue. Danny Sue, if you're watching, <laughs> I hope you're watching, man. Congratulations for your book. I really appreciate it. I'm going to read this tonight. You know, it's very simple. And it's, I, think I, need, I think I need to go lift, you know. Injury Prevention Tips for Novice Weightlifter. Imagine that. This is the one of the students that I coach. He's got a published book now. He's got a published book. Again, let's go back to our topic for tonight. Uh, I got my uh, water here. Water, not beer, right? If you're watching live, please comment live. Watching on the replay, please comment replay. But let me introduce our guest for tonight. Our guest for tonight is Dr. Harry Fitz, or Fitz Harry. He got into PT because he had... A basketball injury. If you're a therapist right now, there is some sort of reason why you became a therapist. You probably had a grandmother who had therapy. You probably had this experience. So this is what happened to him. He got a he got into PT school because he had a basketball injury. And now he got into private practice because he wanted to help others his way. His way, ladies and gentlemen. Not this company's way, not the other person's way, but his way. If you really want to achieve your next level, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing wrong being, you know, being an employee or being uh, employed by someone. But if you really want to level up and actually treat on your own terms, treat as you want, you got to do it. Your, you you got to start at least a side hustle where you can treat other people the best that you can be. Right? You know, he, you're not limited with the insurance number or somebody looking behind your back. So. Uh, if you really want to, you know, start a side hustle, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, Dr. Fitz, prior to becoming a PT, he taught for three years. Three years, ladies and gentlemen. Middle school, high school, and college. He's innately a teacher, ladies and gentlemen. He's like, he's deep inside, he's already a teacher, right? So right now, he owns Harry Physical Therapy and Wellness mm -hmm, in Florida, it is an in-home PT and OT practice in Central Florida. So they see patients in the comfort of their homes and offices. So we're going to ask him how he started this, right? How he started it, because we want to know, right? Uh, so they specialize, they specialize with geriatric population with focus on orthopedics, fall prevention, Parkinson's disease, and many more. All right? And many more, right? So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to put in our, my good friend, Dr. Fitz Harry. Boom, 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 boom. Ladies hey, and gentlemen, Mike. Fitz, ladies and gentlemen, mm. Fitz, what's going on in your world, man? I am great, man. I'm doing well. Um, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, man. I'm just glad that you're here. I just want to learn from you, you know, from, uh, oh, ladies and gentlemen, you need to learn from this guy. You know, uh, I follow him in Facebook. I follow him in wherever groups. And all he does is just provide awesome value. Without asking anything in return. I mean, of course, he asks something in return. You know, you know what I mean. But he's just providing awesome value in those groups. And he becomes like the, the go-to person when it comes to, you know, starting your own 
little practice, part B, and scaling up. And I was just talking to him behind the scene uh, that he's planning to open up uh, uh, a course for that specific group of people. So, uh, Fitz, could you tell us your journey? Why, why from being a teacher and then you became a therapist and uh, what, what pushed you to be a, uh, an entrepreneur or, or starting your own business? Okay, sure. So I'll start with my journey. So um, I am born. I was born in St. Thomas, the Virgin Islands, and I went to college in the Virgin Islands. And during college, I was playing basketball, went to block a shot, got my thumb injured, and I couldn't move my thumb for months. So went to a physical therapist, and they got it all better. And that kind of sparked my interest in physical therapy. Um, so I went, you know, I taught for three years to make money, kind of like, you know, uh, it was a uh, job I didn't really want at the time, but it was a job that was available. So I did it and I loved it. Um, anyways, I did that. And from there, I went to PT school after three years and got my degree in physical therapy. And while working at a um, private practice, I found out that I wasn't um, satisfied with the quality of care that was being given to clients. You know, I felt that clients weren't given the time, they were treated like a number instead of a patient. And after a few years, I, um, I started my own practice, you know, higher physical therapy and wellness um, in Central Florida. So well, you heard that, ladies and gentlemen. He had an issue with, you know, not giving the good quality treatment for their patients. And Harry, when, when did you start at uh, Harry Physical Therapy? So I started Harry Physical Therapy in 2017 in Port St. Lucie when I was living there, but it wasn't full time. So like many people on this call, I'm sure, you know, you're very, af you're afraid of doing your own thing. You're scared, like what if I um, fail? What if I can't survive? So I had it part-time and it was in the, you know, in the corner, I was seeing one patient a month maybe, or one every other month. And then me and my wife, we moved to um, Central Florida. And that's that was in February of 2019 when I actually put all my eggs in that basket and went full-time with higher physical therapy and wellness. And, wow. I, and again, um, the reason I, I restarted the company was at my former private practice, I was seeing two patients every hour and one and a half hour. So at any point in time, I had four clients in that private practice where I was working at that I had to try to juggle around and treat. And sometimes even five, because one came late or one stayed later, you have five clients in, in there. And I remember sometimes I would just sit like this and just look around the room and say, wow, I got all these clients here, how will I treat them, you know? And then I have to delegate and say, put this one on the e stem, get this one on the bike, I'm gonna do manual manual on this one, have her do 10 more sets of squats or 10 more squats. And I found myself not liking that kind of juggling around of patients. Oh, wow, oh wow. Mm -hmm. So did you hear that ladies and gentlemen, if you are that right now working, uh, uh, seeing multiple patients at a time, I know, I mean, some people, like they like doing it, they like delegating, but if you really want to provide the best service, you know, you can do this as, side, as a side hustle. You know, you can do this as a side hustle. He said he started this 2017 part-time and went full-time 2019. You don't have to go, you know, jump, blah, blah, you know, doing this full-time and then, you know, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm failing. You, know, you can do it on a side hustle, you know, start, you know, one patient, Two patients at a time, you know, you you're, would just get one referral. If you, I know all, probably most of us here in our group, Alternative Healthcare Career Group, we probably know one physician who would give us at least one, you know, at least one uh, patient. Mm -hmm. I'm sure because we're here, you're right. We're, you're, whether you're a PT or a PTA or a CODA or an OT, I mean, you, there's, there's this one doctor that you know that will probably give you one patient. You can start with that one patient. You know, you can start with one patient. Oh, I see Will Boyd. What's going on, Mr. Will? He Will said Fitz is such an inspiration. I've followed this journey in the background the past few years. It, it's been so fun to watch him grow his business. Yes, oh, sir. Well, thank you, Will. I appreciate I really appreciate that, Will. I really appreciate seeing you know you and you and um do, doing your thing as well. But I appreciate you looking at me and following my business. I really appreciate that. Yeah, coming from Will, right, man? Coming yeah, from man. Will, right? And uh, he said, also, Fitz, you deserve all your success. Oh, awesome. Thank you. You want to share your success tips with us, Fitz? And, and well, like you said, that, like you said, Mike, um, one thing that I have learned with 
running my business is to try not to copy somebody else's business. So I think a lot of times, at least for me, when I was looking at everybody else do their business, I would say, oh my gosh, they're doing this. I want to do it exactly like them. But we can't do that. I think the best thing to do is follow your heart and see what you like. When I first started my business, I remember I saw a cash physical therapist and he was saying, you know, don't go to doctors. You can start your own practice. And I remember having that mindset. And for me, it wasn't really working for me because I know for me, I didn't want to do it that way. But I was afraid of doing it my way because I thought that it would fail. But I think once you're passionate about something and once you put the work in, you know, the, the success will come. For me, it just took one patient. Like, honestly, it took me one patient who um, th that I saw. She actually dragged me to the doctor's office with her after I saw her and introduced me to her neuro neurologist. And from there, the re referrals just started flowing. And sometimes, I remember when I first started in February in Orlando, I didn't know anybody. So literally, I was in, in Central Florida in Orlando the only person I knew was the mailman because I introduced myself to the mailman and said, I have no friends. Can you be my friend? I literally said it to the mailman. I think I remember you sharing that story before, man. Yeah. So I literally told the mailman, you know, I'm brand new here. I have no friends. I don't know anyone. I, I'm, you're smiling. So I want to say hi. And literally that's what I did. And what I did was I, you know, I networked. I went out there and met, met people. And eventually, like I said, you know, it just takes one client. It just takes one person to see what you're doing and to spread your name. And, you know, the, the, all the eggs will sort of fall correctly. You know, all the marbles will sort of fall correctly and get you in the, on the right track. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Where did I go? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. that is so amazing. That's very inspirational. And I like what you said, you know, try not to copy uh, what we really mean here, ladies and gentlemen. Is run your own race. Mm -hmm. Run your own race, ladies and gentlemen. The other people's success, it's different. You know, uh, just, but we're all in a race here. Just like, let's just say, just like in a marathon. I don't run, right? I don't run. I don't do sports. But just like a marathon. <laughs> you know, if I compare to myself to Harry, he's probably going to run so fast. And here I am weighing 220 pounds, trying to run at his pace. Guess what? I'm going to lose. Harry, you know, Fitz is tall. How tall are you, Fitz? I'm 6'3". I'm 6'3", six, three. Six, three, ladies and gentlemen. His legs probably is my high. legs. So he's probably going to run faster going to that goal of finishing that marathon. I'll probably go slow. Now stop comparing yourself to other people, ladies and gentlemen, and start running your own race. At running your own race. Uh Facebook user said, uh, run your own race, love it. There you go. Mary, Marianne said that. Yeah, but it's true. Okay. I think I think that having the courses and those different things are very good, though, because they can give you a framework. So, for example, if I want to get into sports, I can look at an athlete and they might say, well, you know, get in shape or, you know, eat right. I can look at those things, but ultimately it's up to you to choose which sport you want to, to go into. Do you want to go into basketball or football or soccer? But having a guide to, you know, at least give you a little bit of a molding is great. And like you said, the same token, once you get there, don't compare yourself with others. And I think Facebook has a very dangerous uh, thing about it where you look on Facebook and you see this person is doing so well, but you have no idea. You're only seeing the good things. You know, when I post on Facebook, I don't post. I, I try to post both failures and inspiration, but I'm sure for the most part, I post more inspiration than failures, you know? And it's, it's happening, but we just don't see it. But we think in our minds that this person only succeeds. And that kind of gets us depressed or it gets us kind of um, loses our confidence. And I really think that, as you said, we should all try to run our own race, do what, do what you love. And my definition of success and your definition could be totally different. You know, you sh we have different currencies and we have different ways that are going to help us to feel that we are successful. And it's very important that we remember that. Mm. That is so powerful, ladies and gentlemen. Again, if you're still watching live, please comment live. If you're watching on a replay, please comment replay. And of course, please give a heart on uh, on uh, Fitz here. He's uh, giving us so much awesome value. So uh, Fitz, you mentioned about the, uh, you know, you mentioned about the sports and everything like that. And you mentioned about basketball. So 
uh, I know you, I know we all try to, I compared myself to other people too. You know, you mentioned about, uh, you know, comparing yourself, comparing yourself to a cash-based practice. Now you're doing part B. Yes. So why do you think it, uh, the Medicare part B is, uh, is beneficial to you? Is it because the population that you serve or is it just because you just decided you want to do this or, or is it just ma it matches your, your personality and approach to your patients? So could you tell us why this, you know, and why did you choose this? I know some people, they do cash. We also accept cash patient. But the majority mm -hmm. of my clients are also like yours. So why this? Why this population? Okay. So so yeah, our, our practice or my practice is a is a is a um a hybrid practice. So we see mostly Medicare um part B clients, but we also take cash as well. So the for me, this is what my reasoning was for taking taking part B. I feel that you know, like Dr. Mike and myself and all you guys, most of you guys out there, we were working, we work all our lives, we we try to get you know, get our careers, you know, successful. We have families. And for me, I see older adults, they had the same, the same race, you know, they had careers, they were working all their lives. They were um, having, you know, having families and doing different things. And now they're older and they're retired. I found that a lot of these clients, they can't get the services that they, they need. So they may need physical therapy, but there's a clinic that's too far away or there is some there is somewhere that they cannot like um, access it, so that is why I started my business for and took Part B because I said to myself, well, I can take Medicare Part B, I can go into the home and see a client who may not be able to get out of their house or they can't find a ride outside, out um, to get to the practice, and also a lot of clients were getting scammed. So a lot of my clients when they go into the house. Their phone rings all the time because somebody is calling for their social security number or somebody is calling to paint their house or add solar systems or fix their locks. And a lot of times these people are, are scam artists. So part of my business, part of my business is to be a resource center. So I tell all my clients when I first meet them that if you need anything, reach out to me because I know a lot of businesses in Central Florida that are vetted, background checked, and are honest and they can they can um, service you. And this is the reason why I took part before, because I want to see those seniors because I feel that they have paved the way for us and we should give back to them. And that's the main reason I'm um, doing the Medicare Part B and doing it in the homes. Oh, wow. That is, that is very powerful, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you're still listening. I was writing stuff down. He said, you know, he would find stuff that other companies will not do. No, just like that, you know, uh, uh, changing the light bulb or whatever, preventing them from getting scammed. And the little things, ladies and gentlemen, you need to be detail-oriented. A lot of us, we try to put down on a resume, hey, I'm detail-oriented. Yes, but when you're actually practicing, you're going to notice all those little things. Oh, Mrs. Smith, uh, you got a light bulb busted here. Uh, I know somebody who can fix this for you. Or I, I'll change it if, if I can, you know. I'll buy this, you know, this, this and then change it for you. And that, those are the little things that you can do and provide. And that will be your differentiating factor when you're providing your awesome therapy services. Yes. Yeah, it, it, go ahead, Fitz. And, and yeah, and I see my patients, you know, um, somebody commented as family. So when I, every single patient I see, it doesn't matter if they're like, you know, a, a Medicare, Medicaid patient or they're a Medicare and they have all the bells and whistles. I try to see each patient as family. And every time I see a patient or my, my contractor see a patient, I always tell them, think of this patient as being your father or your uncle or your aunt or your, or your sister. How would you treat that person? How would you treat that person? So therefore treat the patients that way. So as you said with details, a lot of people and companies say that they're detail oriented, but they, they just put it on paper. We, uh, we try to put it into action. So we see something that's wrong. We tell the clients, hey, you know, I see this going on. If you need help with it, I know someone who can help you with that. Or, hey, you know, I see that this, that this walker is kind of wobbly. Let me fix it, let me fix it for you. Or mm. I see that your light bulb is changing. You know, I'm here right now. I'm tall. Let me change your light bulb. You know, so just little small things like that. I just, I just love people. I love to help people. And I think it has really um, helped to bring success to my business. Oh, wow. That is so powerful, mm -hmm. brother. That's so powerful. I like that. So Fitz treats people, every patient like a VIP and goes mm -hmm. the extra mile to 
do right by everyone. There you go. Thank you very much for sharing that. Alternative healthcare careers, Stacy. So uh well, anyway, uh, uh next question uh, uh fits. You know, I, I know you you do geriatrics and everything. Mm -hmm. And what why did you choose Parkinson's? I mean, is there any reason uh why you specifically chose that? I chose dementia. I mean, or is it just that your specialty, sir? Yeah, it's, it's one of my specialties. So I'm LSVT certified and mm. I'm um, PWR certified as well. So I have both certifications that are Parkinson's. Uh, when I first moved here, uh, I found that there were quite a few Parkinson's patients that needed um, therapy. And that kind of, so in that kind of get, um, drove me towards Parkinson's. And from there, you know, I, I got into the Parkinson's Association of Central Florida. Um, from there, you know, I've been really helping them as well. And um, that's probably one of the main reasons. I, I like the neurological population, and especially that, as you see as, as yourself, in Parkinson's and dementia, people are very down. They, they don't feel as, as confident because they know they have this disease that's progressive. And I know my personality, it, it kind of meshes well with that population in terms of my confidence and my inspiration that I, that I can give those clients. So I thought Parkinson's and geriatrics was the perfect, you know, platform for me to share oh, with wow. my clients. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. You heard that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he chose Parkinson's. I chose Alzheimer's and dementia. You need to find a specific niche, ladies and gentlemen. Follow that M-E-N-T-O-R method that we've been teaching. M-E-N-T-O-R. Letter M is finding or meeting that need. Let me find that thing there. Letter M. There you go. Mentor. Meet a niche. Because you can start a company, everybody can start a company, right? So you can start an LLC, but if you don't have a niche, you'll have a hard time identifying your actual audience. And we talk, we always talk about this. You need to find your specific avatar, your specific group of people, and start serving them. Well, guess what? Oh, oh I'm gonna just be focusing on Parkinson's. No, Fitz probably sees some orthopedic cases too. Oh, I just mention that Alzheimer's and dementia. But guess what? I get a lot of hip patient. I get a lot of shoulder patient. Generalized weakness. Do they have dementia? No. But that's my spe specific niche. So when if you want to scale, if you want to scale up, you have to niche down. Niche down in order for you to scale up. There I like that. There that's you go. Powerful words right there. I love that. But mm. you're right. When I when I moved to Central Florida, I focused solely on Parkinson's. And I remember being so fearful and saying, oh my gosh, you know. I want to do back pain. I want to do shoulder pain. I want to do dementia. I want to do MS. But when I niched down to this Parkinson's, you know, everything else came came into to my, my practice. Um, the Parkinson's patient knew somebody who needed physical therapy, who had back pain. That back pain patient knew somebody. And I never advertised myself as doing orthopedics or doing even younger folks. Like the youngest plant on my case school right now is a a 25 year old weightlifter. I have a CEO of a company who, who has back pain and I go to her office. I never advertise to those companies. I just stayed in my, my niche of doing um, Parkinson's. But the great thing is once you start treating your clients, they're not gonna see you as only a Parkinson's specialist. They're gonna see you as a, a life changer. So they're gonna tell their friends, hey, you know, I know this guy who can help to change your life. He can get you stronger and more confident or the friends are playing bridge or doing something with their with their friends, and their friends say, "Oh my gosh, you're you're more confident now. You're moving better. I don't see you with the walk anymore. Who helped you?" And you know those kind of things help to bring your name out. But the thing is, if you try to grab at every single thing out there, you won't get anything. So it's best to just to try to focus on one thing, niche down, and that's going to really help to build your business. Wow. See, I mean, it's not just me, ladies and gentlemen. Even fits believes in you know niching down you got to mm -hmm. niche down ladies and gentlemen so just follow this mentor method you see it there mentor method letter m is meet a niche find that specific niche if you want alzheimer's go you know do that if you want dementia go ahead do that if you want shoulder guess what we've got other uh uh friends that specifically uh does wounds you know, I know uh, Rod Rodriguez, his specialty is wounds. But does he just see wound patients? No, he's like, he's got multiple uh, PTs and PTAs in his team uh, uh, seeing, you know, uh, different populations. So meet a niche, ladies and gentlemen. 
What's the next letter? It's letter E. Start educating them. I'm sure Fitz has a program on how he educates his patient. Fitz, do you mind sharing your how you educate your 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 patients or your, your yeah your patients? Yeah, sure. So I educate my patients in two ways. Very interesting. So of course, one way I educate my patients in terms of you know how I'm helping them. Every time I do something, I have a little bit of a binder I give them to assist them. But also my patients, once and once patients love you guys, once patients love you, they'll do anything for you. My patients are my best marketers. Because after I after I help them, I said, hey, you know, if you know anybody else who needs help, who wants to get changed like this, you know, please give them my card. And what I do with my patients, I give them two cards. I say one card is for you and one is for a friend. So I, I implore you to give this to any friend you want to. And I, I have my patients go out there and help to um, spread the word about what I do. Um, so that's how I educate my patients in those two ways. One about their condition, of course, you know, what they're going through, um, how this condition is not as terrible as they see it and try to show some kind of light at the end of the, of the tunnel. By the same token, I tell them that there is others out there in the world right now who were just like you. They were, they were probably depressed like you were, they were falling like you were falling, and they need help. So spread the word to your clients. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, ladies and gentlemen. I need to do that. I need to do that. Giving two business cards. Oh, gosh. I'm learning so much today, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, do well, you, you know, ladies and gentlemen, when I'm when I'm interviewing people, I'm not just interviewing them for the sake for interviewing for our show. I'm actually learning. This is the first time I've been interviewing a lot of people, you know, twice a week, every day. This is the first time I heard give two cards. And give two and cards, I give two of your business cards, and you tell them, hey, if you know anybody that needs, bam. And Imagine also that. and also I give my clients, so I went on Amazon. You know, I love you know I love Amazon with my affiliate yep. lists. So I went on Amazon and I bought um, magnets, right? Just okay. regular magnets, like these. If you guys can see it, mm -hmm. on magnets. And what I did was I put my business card on the magnet. This mm -hmm. goes on my client's fridge. And why I do that for is because, first of all, there's nothing on the fridge because no one does this really. So it's always there. And the client goes to the fridge every single day. So every time they go to the fridge, they're going to see this. So even when I discharge them and I'm gone for months, when they go to open their fridge for something, they say, oh, I remember this guy. You know, let me, let me give this card to somebody else. So let me call him and oh, say, I gotta hey. do that, man. I'm going to write that down. I got to do that. This, um, honestly, you know, I don't share this very often, but this has really been a game changer for me as well. Because by giving these cards out to my clients and they have it on their fridge, I mean, I've been to client's house a year later. And it's still in their fridge. The only thing that's sticking on their fridge. And they say, oh, yeah, you know, every time I open my fridge, I see your card. Oh, so wow. That's one. So where do, you, where do you buy this? Do you buy it at Amazon and then they send yeah, it? Yeah. So, so what I do, I buy them from Amazon. I wish I was ready. But I buy the magnets themselves from Amazon. And then you just, it's a stick on. So you just stick the card onto the, onto the, um, the magnet. So they, they come pre-cut. The magnets come pre-cut. And you just stick your card onto the magnet. So the, the magnet has the sticker. Yes, so the magnet has an adhesive and a sticker on it. And I think I have one here. If you guys will just give me one second. Yep. Oh, wow. This is really game changer, ladies and gentlemen. So they come they come like this. So they come like this with this white, you know, mm -hmm. and you pull you pull off the, the sticker and it's uh what am I? It's an adhesive right there. You guys so you can, send me your link, man. So you can stick your you can stick your cards on there, and these are nice, nice and thick. So when the clients get it, it feels nice and nice and quality. And then you put your business card over it, right? Yep. So I just take my business card. Literally, I take my business card. So let's say I have a business card right here, for example. I just mm -hmm. take it and I just put it. I take the sticker off and I just put it on. Mm, and wow. you got it, it's sticked onto the card. Oh wow. That yep. is game changer there. You know, I've been giving out my books. You know, I only okay. give one book, but this is going to be much more affordable. How much is the the actual book? Uh, the book. <laughs> How much is the actual metal or the 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 magnet itself, Fritz? Fitz? Um, for a hundred of them, I think it cost me like twelve bucks for a hundred. Oh gosh! Oh yeah, that's yeah, no it, was, it was twelve or fifteen dollars for a hundred of them. And oh yeah, I'm gonna do that today. I'm gonna. Yeah, the, 
down my to-do list by it, it just takes time of course to you know put them down like put your your cards in but i do it while i'm watching television with my wife or something just you know quickly put them on Wait, I, got, I, I got three girls three kids here oh <laughs> perfect i used to buy from visaprint but visaprint it's so flimsy and it's so it like it's very flimsy and low quality i just bought the magnets and did it myself and it's cheaper that way you know what that's true and the card you know you, it's so cheap the card is like you know one box from mr vista prince like 30 dollars right you got hundreds of it yeah 100 for, for 15 dollars or i mean mm. things you get 12 or 15 dollars and and yeah that's what i do i'm gonna buy that after this all right so uh, after educating them fritz uh let me show this thing here after you've educated Ooh. them ladies and gentlemen i'm sure fritz networks too do you network uh fritz i i i, I don't know if this is true, but I re I truly feel like I'm one of the biggest network networks out there. I network every single day. I mm. mean, constantly. I when I first moved here, I went to um different networking like healthcare networking meetings. So if you look in your area, guys, whatever area you're living in, there are um there there are networking meetings. And even though right now we're in COVID, they're virtual. I just went to a virtual one this morning. I had three virtual meetings this morning where I met different business owners. And with networking, um, there's two um, advice, there's two things of advice I wanna give people. One is don't just network, meet somebody and then email them and say, oh, it's nice to meet you. Um, let's get some coffee, blah, blah. I don't do that anymore. I, used, I saw somebody said to do that. And honestly, for me, it, it just came off as so cliche so what I do is I genuinely talk to the person and ask them different things about themselves. I ask them like, you know, where did they grow up? I ask them, you know, what do they do? People like to feel valued. And if they can see that you value them, they're gonna definitely try to help you with your business. I never talk about myself when I network. I, I, I talk maybe 10 seconds. Hi, I'm Dr. Harry, I'm a physical therapist. I do in-home physical therapy throughout Central Florida, occupational therapy. Um, we take Medicare. What do you do? And the rest of the time, I just listen to what they do. And I think to myself, how can I help this person? So as they're talking about their business, whether it's like, for example, perfect example, right now we have a family awareness card right here that I, that I got, you know, in the past. She does a lot of family awareness, helping with um, assisted livings and elder care. And I say, hey, I have some seniors right now who need that, who need your services. Let me get your phone number. Or your email i'm going to send an email introduction and connect both you guys together or let me call call you and do a three-way call and i sit down and actually i actually do that with the with the with the people who i network with and i never ask for anything in return i i because I, I i really don't want anything in return i know it's going to come back to me i just do it out, out of genuine kindness of doing that with networking that's so, so true that is so true well ladies and gentlemen i don't know if you're still listening or watching or or on the replay, please comment live if you're watching on live. If, comment on replay if you're watching replay. But I like what Fitz said. You know, he will only introduce himself for like five, 10 minutes. And then he start, he's gonna start asking questions uh, on that person that he's networking with. Remember, we're talking about the mentor method. Letter M is meet a niche. Letter E is educate. Letter N is network. When you're networking, be interested, not interesting. Yes. There's time and place for you to be interesting when you're talking, when you're doing a, a speech or a lecture or something like that, yes, be interesting. But when you're networking, be interested. Be interested. So uh, before I keep on going, we're going to be interesting or we're going to be interested uh, on a quick break uh, for all this episode uh, that we're talking about. We'll be back. Hello Note is a truly therapist-friendly practice management solution with integrated EMR that will enhance workflow, efficiency, and patient care. Hello Note reduces error and allows you to spend more time with your patients. It comes integrated with billing. Claims are generated once a note is completed. You can bill with one click and a patient portal, which streamlines the patient intake process. Beautifully engineered and cloud-based for easy accessibility, the software works on all platforms. You can access patient records from anywhere. We also offer 24-7 support. Hello Note is the practice management solution that you're looking for. And yes, thank you very much, Hello Note, for 
for doing that and I appreciate you for those people who don't know I use Telenote for my documentation system and yes I like them and yes uh, it's it's uh, it's not perfect but it is perfect for me in my current practice and everything we're gonna ask uh, also uh, uh, oh we're having trouble issues we'll keep trying okay uh, we're having it says we're they're having trouble issues uh, streaming in our group uh, but uh, yeah I use hello note for our EMR system. And then before I keep on going, remember, we are going to be interested, not interesting. So if you're interested in this, you know, comment uh, hello note. And then here, we're going to be interested too. Why did I choose autonomy? Why my agency is empowered by autonomy? Why did I join autonomy? Why I chose to use the autonomy platform? I chose autonomy because it allows me to have a work-life balance and provide skilled clinical care for my clients. I chose autonomy because of the amazing support structure that it provides to my consumers and staff. I feel that autonomy is one of the only platforms that looks at my clients with disabilities as a person, not as a number. The autonomy platform serves as our back office, therefore allowing us to use our skill set to serve our consumers best to see the best possible outcomes. The autonomy talks about different things. They talk about value-based care. They intentionally limit the number of clients we serve so that we can stay focused on the main thing and not get overwhelmed. That we can focus on providing for our people, meeting their needs, helping them to to develop a level of independence and satisfaction with their lives, and I can get behind that. That's why I'm here. All right, we are back. Thank you very much, Autonomy, for that video. If you are wanting to start your own uh, home health practice, not part A, but serving DIDD adult, the Department of Intellectual and Disabil Developmental Disabilities, reach out to Autonomy. Uh, just make sure to comment or when you sign up on their thing, you know, just make sure to uh, that you got it and saw it from Alternative Healthcare Career. And then we're going to keep on going. We're going to be interested, right? Interested and interesting. Watch out for this show. And yes, check out that show by Bert DeVera on how to start your own home health contract company. If you are interested in how to start your home health contract company, reach out to the, watch that show every Monday. We stream that here in our group at, I think, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I think we're having issues with our Facebook Live. Uh, right now, we're streaming it in YouTube, in our Alternative Healthcare Career page, and also in our group. It's saying here that uh, they are travel having trouble streaming it in our Facebook group, but uh, uh, rest assured we're gonna we're gonna share it and restream it, and then it will be uploaded in our website. But uh, just letting you know it's gonna be okay, ladies and gentlemen. And for those people who wants to learn how to be an Alzheimer's disease, uh, how to be a certified dementia practitioner, remember I teach that class, right? So come and join. Here's the quick video about it.
so much today from Dr. Mike Chua's Certified Dementia Practitioner Live Seminar. Not only was it about facts on how to help as a therapist treat those with dementia or memory deficits, but it was also about how to talk to family members, how to talk to caregivers, how to interact with the nursing staff in the hospital, and really how to present myself as a Certified Dementia Practitioner. If you're looking to broaden your skill set with becoming a certified dementia practitioner, I highly recommend Dr. Mike Chuba's seminar. Hello, my name is Nina Chakashvili. I am support group facilitator leader and I uh, yes, am uh, a specialist and a Alzheimer educator. So um, I just completely um, Dr. Mike Chuba's um, two-day class, which one was the best class. Um, first of all, All right, we are back live, and we're and we're we're we are interviewing the awesome uh, Fitz Harry of Harry Physical Therapy and Wellness. But uh, before I uh, before I bring him back, well, I'm going to bring him back now. So we're going to bring him back. There you go. There he is, Harry of Physical Therapy. What's <laughs> PT? Harry Physical Therapy and <laughs> Wellness. So, yep, yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, I know. Oh, there he is. There's his website. Uh, yes. You got to check out his website, harryptw.com. So harryptw.com mm -hmm. if you want to follow him and uh, just reach out to him. He has this uh, uh, coaching program where he coaches people how to start their own uh, uh, Part B business too. You know, uh, you know, if you really want to learn from somebody, you have to call and talk to somebody. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You also have to invest. You know, uh, um, uh, just like just like basketball, we were talking about basketball. Fitz and I, uh, you know, if you really want to learn how to shoot the ball properly, you got to invest, invest your time, invest in practice, invest in strengthening, invest in your endurance. And same thing if you want to start your own side hustle, you invest in something. You got to learn. You know, even school. I mean, school. Yes, schools. Are, you know, technically, you pay the school, right? And you learn from it. So, uh, uh, Fitz, um, I know we've been talking about the mentor thing, M E N T O R. Um, how, how did you learn this? I mean, did you did you get a coach or somebody or, or something like that, or you yeah, so learned along the way, or do you have a course that you 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 took, or what 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 did you do? So a few things. So um, like you like you said as well with basketball, we can we can invest our time, we can invest our, you know trying to shoot all the time. But at the same time, we sometimes need a coach to tell us like how to do things correctly. So when I first started my business, I did um, look up GT, how I met you, Mike Chua, um, for SS SSPT. So mm -hmm. I took that course. And um, the main thing I got out, out, out of that course, honestly, was it's very funny to say this, but the very first lesson that he taught was, I think, most of what I needed. And that's, that's where I kind of stopped. Because first of all, I met you guys. But also, he had different books there, like self-development books. And those books have helped me so much because we learn how to be physical therapists and healthcare professionals, but we don't learn how to network or how to connect with people. And reading those books, like how to win and influence people, mm. um, the seven, um, the seven, seven habits. Hab habits of highly effective people or something like that, outwitting the devil, like all those books I, I, I've read. And those have really been the, the one that helps to, ex to scale my business. Um, I, I try some driving. I have Audible. So if anybody wants to sign up for Audible, use my link. But I have Audible and I listen to books all the time as I'm driving through, you know, to my patient's house. And that has really helped to build my business. So I couldn't do it by myself. I had you as well. I look at, I saw what you were doing online. Um, Anthony Mariotato, David Bailiff, Josh Payne, uh, you know, I, um, Aaron LeBauer. I watched all these guys, Tracy. Tracy Sir, there's so many I can't like name them all, but a lot of these people I have watched and you know took in take little things from them as well. Um, you know, reaching out to them and learning from them, paying them to teach me, you know, some pointers, and it has really helped to scale my business. Mm. Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Did you hear that? You gotta get a coach. You gotta get a coach. You know, my kids, if they want to learn how to play the piano. Do I just tell them, do I just buy them a piano and just let them play? Blah, blah, bing, 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 bing. No, we invested on a good teacher. We invested on a good, you know, whatever you call that, those notes. 
and they invested their own time and practice and practice and practice. Same thing. We wanted to learn how to play or what you call this tennis. And mm. we hired uh, a tennis coach. We paid, ladies and gentlemen, we paid, we paid, <laughs> we paid them, we paid him to, you know, for us to play tennis. It cost us, you know, he, he taught us, you know, hey, Michael, this is wrong. You know, you need to reach out, you know, you need to stretch or whatever. And same thing in starting a business. You can figure out it on your own. There's, there's nothing wrong doing it on your own. But if there's somebody looking at you at the bigger picture, getting out of that picture frame, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to do it better. You're going to do it better. I, li I like how you uh, 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 say, uh, mentioned that, uh, uh, Fitz. So let me go back to the word mentor here. So you talked about the networking, right? Mm -hmm. so letter T, do you, 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 do you have a team? Do you have a team yes. that you that uh, helps you out uh, or is it just you? Okay, that's a good that's a good point too. So when I first started my business, I'm sure a lot of people here are just like me. So I like telling the story. I thought to myself, I'm not gonna spend any money. I'm gonna do everything by myself because I'm gonna save money. And like you were mentioning tennis, for example, if I go on YouTube or you know um, do my do my own thing and learn how to play tennis, I might learn how to play tennis. But by the time I'm done, like perfecting it, I might have something wrong that I didn't notice, and have to go back and start all over again. Think of all the wasted time and the wasted money, and in the end, you may still go and hire that um that tennis coach to help you. So the same with me. I made sure that I I kind of took some guidance and had a mentor to kind of guide me through because we kind of see things like this sometimes and we need somebody else to show us the bigger picture and see the things that we're missing. Um, for team of winners, in I'm not sure exactly what you mean by team of winners, but I'll tell you what it means to me. I have um, different professionals in Orlando that I trust and that um, encourage me and I encourage them. So we have um, coaching calls that we do with each other or power calls as you would call them. Um, I have a home care company where me and the home care, the nurse, we meet every once a week and talk about things that we can do different or how I can help her clients, how she can help my clients. I have other companies around the, the area as well that I do that as well. I have certain clients that are discharged and got better that I still stay in contact with because they help me to grow my business as well. I always try to find people around me who are going to encourage me, but also people who I can encourage as well. So I try not to find somebody who I cannot help. I want to help everybody because when they win, I'm going to win. And that's how I see it as team of winners. And it even goes here on Facebook with you, Mike, and with David. You know, those are two, um, Heidi as well. There's many people on Facebook who I really um, try to network with and talk to every now and then because Sometimes I'm stuck in a rut. I get discouraged. I get sad. I get um. I need that that kind of like you know lift up and that that confidence boost sometimes. So it's very important to have a team around you. Mm, that is so powerful, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I like what uh, uh, Fitz said. You know, finding a team of winners, whether it's your employees, whether it's your teammates whether you're co-workers, whether it's online or virtual or actual, you know, meetup, you know, mastermind meetup. Why? Because you are the average of the five people you hang out with, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Whoever you hang out with, that's going to be you. You hang out uh, with people who, who complains, guess what? You're going to end up complaining too. In, in our group, we try to, you know, yes, we let other people vent and everything, but uh, we try to limit people who are venting. We want to see all those people who are winning and actually finding solutions to their problem. Because if you're not part of the solution, you're actually part of the problem. With those team, with those mastermind group that uh, uh, Fitz was talking about, people will actually push you to your next level. You know, when I wanted to be an author, guess what? Did I hang out with people uh, outside here in, in small city, Martin, Tennessee? No, I hang out with people who are actually authors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they pushed me to write a book. Yep. I wanted to start a podcast, a show like this. Did I hang out with those authors? No, I hang out with those people who wanted to start a show and create a podcast. And if you wanted to learn how to start your own Part B practice, guess what? Hang out with uh, with uh, with Fitz, and that way he can teach you 
Uh, and guess what? Those people that taught me how to start and write my book, I paid them, ladies and gentlemen. I paid them to go inside that group. People who taught me how to start my own podca podcast, I paid them so they could teach me. And same thing with coaching. Yes, you can you can start playing tennis yourself, like what Fritz was talking about. In the end, you're going to spend more because you wasted your time. <laughs> right, Fitz? Mm -hmm. Learn easily from that person. Right, Fitz? And another thing I want to add to in terms of teams of winners, I have a, I don't do everything myself. I didn't answer that question. I have a VA. So I have a VA and I have other therapists that see patients for me. Now, I have a story that I hope I can share with you guys. I used to wash my own clothes, right? When I was back in St. Thomas. And this is a very good story. And I remember this lady, she would charge me $20 per load to wash my clothes, um, dry them, fold them, and bring them back to me. So what I did was I gave her my clothes and went to work. Now at the time, I was working at a, a PRN job that was paying $45 per hour. So while I'm getting paid $45 for those two hours that it would take me to wash my clothes, dry my clothes, and um, pack my clothes and fold them, she was washing my clothes for me. So technically, instead of me losing 90 bucks being at home doing this, I actually made like $20 per, you know, per hour for having her do my clothes for me. And it goes into um, your practice. Um, as you do Part B, if you want to do Medicare Part B, you will find that as you get busier and you start to grow your practice because you will grow once you're doing the right things, that you are spending too much time billing. All the time you're billing, you can be seeing clients. So instead of doing it yourself, you can pay somebody um, a certain amount of money and while they're doing the billing for you, you can use a time to either see clients or spend time with your family, um, watch your favorite TV show. You can do so many other things than doing the work that you don't want to do. So it's very important to find somebody who is passionate just like you are, but they are passionate in doing the things that you don't like to do. So I love finding people to do things for me that I don't like doing. Oh, wow. That is so powerful, ladies and gentlemen. You know, washing and, and folding clothes. I mean, yes, you know, some people like doing that, but mm -hmm. I also don't do it. Uh, <laughs> actually, it's my wife who does it. But I'm going to relate it to a mowing the lawn, ladies and gentlemen. I don't mow my lawn. <laughs> I, ever since we moved in this house, I don't even have a lawn mower. I don't even have a leaf blower. <laughs> so I just pay somebody 35 bucks to do it. They do it for like one hour or two hours real quick. And then I'm they're done. If I do it, if I attempt to do it, it's going to take me like three, four hours probably. And I'm losing those hours where I can could have probably seen a patient and enjoy that time uh, with the family or playing PlayStation or watching The Office or whatever. So oh, the office. I love The Office. <laughs> love The Office, right, man? Uh, yeah. I know we're almost running out of time. So uh, speaking of the mentor method, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we already talked about one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, Fitz, do you have a coach? I mean, you mentioned uh, David. You mentioned Greg. You mentioned that. I mean, uh, do you up until now? Do you still have a coach? Um, not not really. I don't really have a coach right now, to be honest with you. Um, but what I, I what I have is a, a mastermind team. I would say mm -hmm. so. So I have people who I talk to every single week. And what we do, this is a very good thing for people to do as well. Every single day with this person that I, I do it with, we write our goals in WhatsApp and we send to each other. So we send out our daily goals and said, these are our goals that we'll do. By us doing that, it's when holds accountable. So I would say, for example, you know, pay X, Y, and Z or see so-and-so or do this and do that. And what she will do is she will hold me accountable and I will hold her accountable too. So we mm. kind of like help each other in that way. We don't really coach one another, but we, I would say I have an accountability partner. And that really helps me to complete my, my tasks for the day, especially first thing in the morning. I, I look at my phone, the first thing at 5, 5 a.m., she has all her goals posted there. I post all my goals, and then what we do is we put under a done, done, done once we are finishing our goals. So by the end of the day, we have all of our goals finished. If we're not finished, we say, hey, you said you were doing this today. What happened? And we can, you know, put mm. it to the next day and get it done. So that's what we do. I miss my accountability partner at SSPT, but uh, yeah. You need to have an accountability partner, ladies and gentlemen. You need that. So you get a, need get a that. New one. Get a new one. That's what I did. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, last but not the least, uh, letter R, ladies and gentlemen. 
I'm sure Fitz does everything. He just repeats this again and again and again. Well, that's the last letter, letter R. Repeat it again and again. Well, Fitz, uh, I know it's getting late on your time zone there. Thank you very much for your time, brother. I appreciate you. Any last parting wisdom for us uh, to encourage our uh, audience in the alternative healthcare career? Sure. Um, if you're going to start a business or you're doing networking or you know whatever you want to do, don't forget that you are not hunting, you're farming. And when I say that, I mean that it's not going to just, you can't just go out there and expect things to happen overnight. You got to put that seed in the ground, you got to water it, and eventually you, you keep doing the right things. You don't uncover it, you leave it there, you do all the right the right things, it's going to eventually grow. So what, whoever you meet, whatever you do, just think of it as, I met this person, later on it's going to be successful, but do the hunting. Don't don't think of it as no. Do the farming. Don't think of this as hunting, and that's going to really help you a whole lot. Oh wow, that is very powerful, ladies and gentlemen. That's the first time I heard that. You mm -hmm. are not hunting. You are farming, ladies and gentlemen. And when you're farm, when you're hunting, I love that. I love that, bro. When you're hunting, you're killing something. You're taking away a life. You're taking away. You know, you're 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 killing. Who wants mm -hmm. to kill? I mean, you don't want to kill, you know. You no, know, you know what I mean. But mm -hmm. when you're farming, you're adding. When you're hunting, you're subtracting. When you're farming, you're actually adding. And, you're putting and this, seed. I, I know we're short on time, but let me put it this way too. If I met you, for example, for the very first time and I'm doing hunting, you give me a patient, I grab a patient, and I, you know, I see the patient, you're gonna say, Wow, you know, this guy didn't help me, and that's gonna kill our relationship. But if I meet you and I say, hey, Mike, you know, I know somebody who needs your, your dementia course. Then later on, I say, hey, Mike, you know, I know someone who you can really help. Eventually, as I keep watering, you know, watering the plant, building that relationship, it's going to flourish where you're going to refer to me. I'm going to refer to you. And that'll be a nice, strong bond because we're constantly, as you said, repeat it. We're constantly going back to one another and helping one another and just flourishing, and we're both benefiting. I'm getting the fruit from you, and you're getting the water from me. Oh, gosh, that is so powerful, ladies and gentlemen. Stop hunting. You know, stop bringing home the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> start farming. Mm -hmm. Start farming, ladies and gentlemen. You, you plant the seed. You water that. You know, when you're planting a seed, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Her uh, Fitz is is he he likes gardening, so we're gonna oh, use this analogy. When you're planting a seed, you gotta make sure when you're planting that seed, you plant it in a good soil, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Starting a business, you gotta plant it in a good soil. Now you put the seed, you plant it in the soil. Guess what? You gotta water it. You gotta do your part. You gotta do your part, ladies and gentlemen. You gotta water it. You just don't leave it. Well, guess what? There will be weeds on the sides. Guess what? You, you let the, the weeds come out. You're going to have to pluck those weeds out, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. You know what a coach does? The coach is the sunshine. The sunshine, the sun. Your, your seed it needs the sun. It needs the sun. It's going to be hard, ladies and gentlemen. That seed... It's going to be hard. You feel like, you know, if you were the seed, you're covered with the soil and you feel like you're so dark in that current situation of starting your own business. I'm like, oh gosh, when am I going to get out and sprout this, this, uh, 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 get out of this soil it's so dark? Well, guess what? There are a lot of pressures outside, ladies and gentlemen, that soil pushing you down. Well, guess what? Some people will put some fertilizers on you, some mm -hmm. manure. Those manures, those fertilizer, ladies and gentlemen, those are the challenges. If you keep pushing, keep watering, keep getting that sunshine, that coaching from somebody else, guess what? That 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 seed will eventually flower out. What are, is that flowering out? Will come out. <laughs> yep, and grow exactly. Good tree, ladies and gentlemen. You just keep pushing, like what uh, Harry was talking about, uh, or um, uh, Fitz was talking about. Fitz, we're gonna post your thing here. Okay. Uh, there you go. Uh, is this your email and your website? So, uh, yep. Um, so you can contact me there for, um, I have a few programs coming out very soon. Like we talked about in the background. Um, I want to get my garden program restarted again because I'm actually moving to a different house. Now we're getting a, a bigger house. I have my, I have my own office now in the new place we're moving into in October. 
So I'm going to restart the gardening program, and then I have the online program I, that we talked about that I'm going to release very soon and probably come and talk to you guys about it later on. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Well, again, uh, Fitz, thank you very much for your time. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you very much for everything that you do for encouragement and for thank the things that you do in our group. It is my pleasure. Again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, without further ado, we're going to close this out. But uh, uh, before I let uh, Fitz go, I'm just going to share uh, this uh, quick. If you want some passive income, not really passive, you still have to do your part. Uh, if you know affiliate marketing, check out this affiliate program that we have in our group. what i said if you want to earn some passive income there by just sharing those links uh you know uh comment there i want to affiliate link and we'll share you that link and that way you can sign up to be an affiliate again thank you very much uh fitz thank you very much ladies and gentlemen we appreciate you be awesome be great be excellent and we will see you next week bye-bye <laughs>